Let us provide an overview of the presentation. So the first question is um, whether the uh, question is dangerous to myself, and then we get busy looking at um, other questions, um, such as the disease origin, there are theories uh, thrown left, right, and center. The previous presenters have mentioned that the fatality to the new disease, particularly at the uh, if the disease is new, is something that is particularly alarming, something that is particularly troubling. As far as HIV is concerned, um, the uh, first patients were um, historically were diagnosed at the late stages of the disease. Um, the dependence of, uh, uh, as far as the coronavirus is concerned, um, we need to um, understand um, how we are dealing with asymptomatic patients, patients in aging groups, and um, we must study the effectivity rate. And uh, if um, one person infects two subjects, uh, the uh, disease is going to spread fairly fast. HIV has fairly limited transmission uh, modes, trajectories, uh, just sexual and um, uh, bloodborne. Um, however, um, as far as uh, COVID-19 is concerned, it is airborne, so its an, uh, and its effectivity rate is, of course, uh, going to be greater. However, much depends on the uh, country, much depends on the environment. To control a disease, we need to understand it. We need to be able to diagnose it. And a lot of progress has been uh, made in the area of HIV and in the area of COVID-19. Um, diagnostic methods were developed quite rapidly. The research community is consolidating its efforts and potentials um, in developing the vaccine. However, the still a lot needs to be done to resolve the problem fully. Early research of HIV looked at um, the um, at how good the diagnosis, me uh, the diagnostic uh, methods were. Um, a lot of worries were um, about false positive and false uh, negative results, and the same issues uh, persist in um, COVID uh, diagnosis. We understand that PGR methods are um, the best at the early stages, antibody methods at the later stages, and of course. In a number of cases, there are uh, maybe unnecessary debates about um, the possible uses of different diagnostic methods, which should be used when. And Before one can identify um, as a COVID infected person um, their relatives, their friends, um, people tend to see COVID 19 as a far fetched problem, something that is not directly relevant to them. And the same happened with um, HIV because um, uh, at a certain point, uh, people tended to believe that um, HIV is a disease that only affected, say, uh, gay men in America. But no, not really. And the same uh, applies to COVID-19. At, um, at the early stages of the epidemic, um, we tended to associate this disease with um, China. We used to believe that um, China is far away and it's never going to um, get to Europe. But the Italian scenario showed that 
The virus can spread really quickly. The media response was often described as hype, sensationalism. So the terrifying news about COVID-19 um, that was spread by um, uh, by the media um, was distrusted to just as much um, an extent as, um, um, as HIV. So in our media, for example, uh, journalist, journalists at some point um, shifted from uh, monthly reports to quarterly reports on COVID. But in the early stages of the disease, the um, Minister of Health um, announced the number of uh, COVID patients um, daily at briefings at press conferences. And it is very important how you relate, how you present the news to society, to the wider community. Stigma questions um, were fairly important because as far as HIV patients were concerned, they were very often castigated for promiscuity, for homosexuality, for drug use, um, and there was a lot of victim blaming. So they got the disease, serves them right. And the same thing applied to COVID. Many people believed that uh, COVID was only contracted by uh, wealthy people who can afford to travel to Italy. Uh, it was um, their own fault um, they, uh, that they brought the virus into the country. And we remember that for a long while there used to be quite heated discussions about HIV certificates when um, HIV patients were not allowed to um, enter a number of countries, but then um, the situation gradually changed. And uh, similar discussions are ongoing about COVID passports. Of course, HIV is a disease that is incurable. It's a lifelong disease. COVID, on the other hand, Um, is a disease that results in a very fast outcome, so people can get, uh, people can recover fairly quickly and travel to a different country. So, the media content has changed from absolutely terrifying, uh, absolutely terrifying, to more productive to recommendations um, targeted at different um, groups of the population. There was a lot of confusion about HIV and about COVID. Um, at some point, the people refused to believe that condoms could actually protect against HIV because the virus is so small, they, uh, they thought um, they, uh, it could penetrate through the membrane. The same applies to uh, to COVID. Uh, for HIV, uh, we're talking about protective uh, sex rather than safe sex. Um, there is no 100% guarantee of protection. And I see a parallel with the current discussion about masks and their protective potential against COVID. So uh, many patients believed that um, the uh, mask should be worn by COVID-infected people um, only, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and this created a lot of errors. It created a lot of misunderstanding. But when we change our public messages um, uh, too quickly, uh, we very, uh, this very often results in uh, the loss of trust in the media and politicians. 
And of course, a lot of social aspects are at play here. With HIV, we started actually talking about many subjects that used to be taboo, especially in, um, um, in uh, the NIS. You remember the joke, the USSR doesn't have any sex, there is no sex in the USSR. And there was no experience of uh, contacts with vulnerable populations. Harm reduction was an entirely new philosophy back in those days. So as far as HIV is concerned, we um, thought little in those days um, about confidentiality or anonymity issues. For example, the um, STD patients were um, registered uh, and the records were delivered to the um, Communist Party um, units, to the Communist Party bureaus. Uh, but with HIV, a lot of things changed. COVID is doing the same. It brings us to our senses in terms of uh, confidentiality. So if a disease spreads quickly, it is going to spread quickly. The forgotten infections will, uh, will be returning. New infections will be appearing. So COVID-19 um, is no exception. And of course, collective action is needed, even for STD or um, diseases that are transmitted through drug injections. It isn't enough to recommend the, uh, to the patient to change their uh, behavioral practices. We need to change the behaviors of large groups of people. We need larger behavioral interventions. As far as testing is concerned, we need to practice target group testing. We need to reach out to those groups that are particularly vulnerable to the disease. You don't go looking for um, HIV or COVID in uh, wild boars in the forest. But with HIV, um, to make testing really effective, we needed to uh, reach out to hard to contact groups, to vulnerable groups, unstable groups, and then unstable groups. Uh, with um, COVID, it's the same. So first, we only tested symptomatic patients. But then it became clearer that transmission, um, that it was uh, asymptomatic patients that were largely responsible for the transmission. So it's the same problem. How do you um, get to the target groups? To the on the other hand, it's very important that people understand why uh, the diseases happen and to know their HIV status and their COVID status. They need to look after their health and they need to look after um, their, uh, their nearest and dearest. 30 years ago, The so-called sentinel surveillance studies were um, a new intervention, and we needed to develop the strategy uh, for strategies for uh, working with hard-to-reach groups. We needed to diagnose them, and we needed to cover them with prevention interventions. With COVID-19, it's the same. It is fairly difficult to identify the COVID-19 infected patients if they are asymptomatic and they can transmit the virus unknowingly. However, if there are some measures that will change the patient's 
lives, complicate the patients' lives. They will not be interested in finding out about their COVID-19 status. If HIV patients are legally persecuted uh, for intentionally infecting another person, um, uh, this is a source of danger, and um, a person might think, wow, I don't need to know this um, HIV status. Do I want to know it? With COVID-19, it's the same. So if uh, you know your COVID-19 status, um, uh, you may lose your uh, job, you, will, uh, you may lose your money, and this will demotivate people against uh, contacting healthcare facilities, healthcare services. So contact tracings or uh, looking for people who have contacted HIV patients uh, sexually or through drug use, um, is, uh, is one thing. But as far as um, COVID-19 is concerned, it's difficult to understand uh, which contacts a patient might have had, a COVID patient might have had in um, hospital or uh, in extra hospital facilities. So if um, one person looks after their health and is interested in finding out their COVID-19 status and the other isn't interested. We can compare it with a situation um, whereby a swimming pool has um, separate lanes for patients who pee in the swimming pool, and uh, for swimmers who pee in the swimming pool, and for swimmers who don't. Uh, and that will only create the superficial um, effect of doing everything right. However, if most of the people, if the majority of the people do not adhere to um, our messages, to our recommendations and guidelines, our um, interventions will not be effective. And let us remember how we used to believe um, that HIV patients shouldn't have sex, they shouldn't take drugs. But as far as COVID is concerned, the early at the early stage, when the virus started spreading in China, it was difficult to suggest even that um, that we are able to introduce such um, large-scale lockdown quarantine measures. The idea of quarantine. The idea of the lockdown was to prevent a rapid surge of new disease cases, a rapid surge of incidents. So we needed to make sure that medicine is prepared to uh, deal with a uh, large number of patients. In China, in Italy, there used to be huge problems. There used to be long waiting lists. There, uh, there used to be queues uh, made up of ambulance cars. But this problem was resolved. And when it was, it became clear that medicine is not going to collapse, that the public health care system is going to withstand this crisis. In Lithuania, even the uh, most educated uh, people started um, wearing masks, and they cast dirty looks to at those who visited supermarkets without one. We understood that large-scale lockdown or quarantine uh, measures should be reduced. They should be made milder to avoid exacerbation of social problems. So the attitude of uh, this or that problem might be different depending on our world outlook, depending on who we are, how we look at a particular problem. So sometimes 
a lot of things, a lot of messages um, are made with, for public relations purposes. And uh, sometimes this public relations concern may outweigh the education concerns. Providing high quality data for the target group, informing it. If you have worked with HIV, you understand that he, uh, there wasn't such a large amount, such a large proportion of bad quality data in uh, HIV medicine as it has happened to many other fields of medicine. But infodemia, uh, COVID-19 infodemia, may um, actually bring more harm than the virus itself. Conclusions. So what does COVID-19 has in common with AIDS? Both are animal viruses that cross the species barrier. Nobody is immune to COVID-19. Anybody is in danger. In the early stage of the um, epidemic, there was a large um, amount of uh, denial. However, gradually, the attitude to the problem changed, and we became uh, we began to understand, step by step, that both infections uh, make it important to uh, reach out to the highest risk groups. Of course, behavioral interventions are important. With COVID, the age group and underlying disease uh, should be taken into consideration. So what we're doing is we are trying to invent something that is already there, inventing a bike. Um, so we have become to uh, we have grown to understand that um, we have become more aware that um, any biological material taken from any patient needed to be hand, uh, needs to be handled with care and uh, infection control measures uh, should be implemented properly in full scale in all healthcare facilities if we don't do that the epidemic will continue to expand. HIV has changed the world. COVID-19 is changing the world, and the world will be changing until a vaccine can be found. We won't, uh, still, we won't be able to return to our life before COVID, life as we knew it before COVID-19. And it's quite important to understand that only a targeted response will help us achieve the effective response to the epidemic. And we don't need, uh, and we, uh, we have to bear in mind that prevention is just as important as um, as treatment. If we don't, um, we won't be able to catch up. We won't be able to keep abreast with the epidemic development. Um, in politics, it is easy to be wise after the event, but uh, no matter how you behave, people will still criticize you. For example, we are wise now uh, to criticize the Swedish response to the epidemic. But uh, what you have to consider is uh, the amount of knowledge that was available um, at the time when uh, particular um, pandemic interventions were uh, adopted in that country. So thank, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, attend your Congress. And it is very uh, crucial for um, scientists, for researchers uh, within the medical profession to be able to suggest, to be able to discuss what needs to be done. Uh, we must be able to look back 
that we must be able to look forward uh, with uh, the knowledge that we have with teamwork, because only teamwork um, will enable us to um, fight and achieve global health. COVID shows that a single country won't be able to resolve this issue single-handedly.